Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gospel Tech. Today, we're talking about technology, specifically what we mean when we say technology. Uh, really, what we I want to, I guess, address in this conversation is that there are two kinds of tech. This is mostly what we get wrong when we talk about technology, is that uh, it's not all the same. It doesn't mean that it just plugs into a wall or it's because it has a screen or emits blue light but instead there's really two kinds and this gets down to how we use it and also how it's designed the first kind of tech is called tool tech this is tech that helps us create uh, we're the ones driving the work forward it can't move faster than our brains because we're the ones creating it it simply leverages our abilities so uh, a simple example of this might be like word processing if i'm typing into a document I can type much faster than I can handwrite and I can edit faster and I can share it faster and I can save it on the cloud or on a hard drive or in multiple locations effortlessly. I can make six copies of it without ever having to use paper or toner or a pen. Uh, so that's tool tech. Drool tech on the other side is technology that helps us consume. And this isn't good and bad tech, but it is designed differently. The main difference with drool tech from tool tech is that it's designed to take our time, our focus, and our money. That's really important because many times when we're reading research, let's say, about, well, these are the concerns about technology. You're reading something about like technology, it's killing our kids. Uh, whatever scary thing you might have read about technology, oftentimes it's talking about drool tech. It's talking about tech that's been designed intentionally to, de to develop habits, to make us want to come back to it more. And really at the end of the day, to convince us that we need something we never even wanted. Now that's really important with drool tech because it's consumption focused. So uh, primary examples of this would be streaming shows, uh, video games, social media, music, news apps, anything that has really an algorithm that is sending us content through something like a feed. Uh, but many of the behavioral loop, uh, excuse me, behavioral design aspects of drool tech would involve notifications. If there's points and leaderboards, if it has likes and social feedback, uh, meaning you could track followers or something like that. Uh, any of those examples would be probably behavioral design that's intended to develop a habit. Uh, I think Nira Yal nails this in his book, Hooked. He's actually given us hints on how to create habit creating products, but the, the example is still there for us to see. Uh, you have a trigger, either an external one, so like a notification or an internal one like boredom, and that leads us to an action. And so they use our app, they play our game, they watch our show, which leads us to a variable reward. Now this might be as clear as an unknown amount of points or gold or loot drop in a game, but it also can be feedback or likes. These are things we're not exactly sure what's gonna happen, it can actually even be when we swipe down on our social media feed and it pops up more information. We don't exactly know what we're gonna get and it gives us that little bit of excitement of maybe something now, <laughs> right? That's a variable reward, which means now we have investment. We've got our little bit of feedback. By the way, the feedback doesn't have to be positive. You can get negative comments on a video or a post, but it still was feedback. You still got something from it. And even though it might make you mad, you're more likely to return to this thing next time because you got something. It wasn't radio silence, uh, which brings us back to the next time you receive that trigger, notification, boredom, whatever it is, uh, you are more likely to repeat that behavior. So the, that's how drool tech is. Again, it wants to take our time, our focus, and our money. Uh, probably the best example of this would be YouTube. Uh, so YouTube, if they have a, over a billion users a month, if they could extend 1% of their users for one minute a month, they would have more than 38 extra years of viewing in that month. Now that's a huge win for them. And since more than three quarters of their viewing comes from the suggested bar, uh, that means that more than three quarters of the people showed up for something that they wanted to search and then ended up choosing to stay for at least one other thing <laughs> that they wanted, uh, which is YouTube doing its job. They have a huge financial incentive to do that because there's a massive revenue stream available uh, for getting people to just give a little bit more of their time, or in the case of YouTube, 38 extra years in a given month of viewing. So when we talk about tool and drool tech, Again, uh, Microsoft Word would be an example of tool tech. At no point does Microsoft Word send you a notification at 11 p.m. and go, hey, I was thinking about you. Haven't noticed you haven't been around for a while. Uh, did you notice that Sally started her book already? Here's an excerpt. Did you notice this way better than yours? Right? Like that, that doesn't happen. It simply waits for you. You write, you can leave for an hour, a day, a year. At no point will Word bother you. Compare that to some of our favorite drool tech and it's very good at bothering us. In fact, it might remind us about someone that we once knew 20 years ago but haven't talked to since then. 
And we didn't need to know that it was their birthday or any other random information about them. And yet, Drool Tech will remind us because the goal, again, isn't to give us what we want, but instead to convince us we need something that we don't want. So, in review, when we talk about technology, there's tool tech and drool tech. It's not good and bad tech, but it is tech that supports our goals and tech that sometimes looks to supplant or circumnavigate our goals in order to reach its own goal. Uh, it certainly might allow us to have entertainment or connection with friends or some creative outlets, but it always has another thing. It wants to keep us longer than we wanted to stay, or it wants us to have, come, have us come back more often than we planned on coming, or even pay more than we intended to pay. So uh, that's our conversation on tool and drool tech, the two types of tech. This will be foundational for our conversations going forward. And my question for you today is, what kinds of technology do you use the most? Where is your technology best being used? Meaning, uh, and by that I mean, where are you most healthy with your tech use? And where's an area where you look at your tech and go, you know what? Maybe this tech is using me and I'm not using it as much as I thought I was. Join us again for this conversation next week as we continue to talk about how we can love God and use tech.